Yo, what's cool and what's going on? We're less than a week away from the NFL draft and oh, we got some more rankings, some defense and special teams. Don't forget about long snappers, kickers, punters, all those. We're going to go into that. Hey man, I had to do the long snappers too, but yeah, we've got the defensive rankings today. We went through offense. Like I said earlier, these are just my rankings. They're nowhere near as accurate as guys like Dane Brugler, TFG, and Broshmo, all these other guys. They're, man, they're amazing. I just kind of love football, like football. I watch a lot of games and do some film studies on broadcasts and things like that. And I just say, yo, sometimes there's a little bit of bias with this, but it is what it is. I love football. We're going to get into rankings here. Let me know your rankings and where you have players. But without further diction, let's go ahead and get right into it here. Edgewise, we're going to start with the defense alignment, which to me, some guys that stand out, you got Miles Murphy at number two and Will Anderson, pretty self explanatory. While I go back and I watch the tape and I'm like, well, you know what? Maybe a little overhyped with Will Anderson at the same time. I still think he's going to be an absolute stud in the NFL, so I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to overthink this. Miles Murphy. I, didn't, I thought I was going to have him lower, but at the same time, I just think the potential with Miles Murphy, it's he's going to get there. You know what I mean? Like, he's just got so much athleticism and tools and traits. Like, if an NFL coach can get him and say, yo, let's work with this, let's put some power together, utilize the leverage battles better, get more in your run fits, Miles Murphy's going to be an absolute stud of the NFL. So I just, it's so close for me between these, like, three guys, between Murphy and... Nolan Smith, Van Ness, Wilson, eh, you know, Wilson for sure too is in that conversation. Uh, Nolan Smith, I love Nolan Smith. He may not be this like true wrecking machine, but it's like this guy to me is going to be Hassan Reddick on, you know, like he's just going to be an absolute nightmare for NFL offensive lines to have to deal with, with his speed and twitchiness. That's what's so good about it. And he's not a liability in the run game. Out of like these, other than Lucas Van Ness, I think he's a better run defender even than, you know, some of these guys, Miles Murphy, Tyree, Tyree Wilson, Isaiah Foskey, like day one, Nolan Smith, he gives it 100 every single play, he's not scared of nobody, I don't care what your size is, if you're Dewan Jones coming at you, he's still going to lean and put his arms into you and, you know, he's not going to back down from nobody, that's what I love about Nolan Smith too, but really, really good if you're looking for speed. When it comes down to these three, four guys, it's kind of like, what are you looking for? What is your scheme? What is your team? And, you know, all those sort of things. Uh, Lucas Van Ness, I'm really, really high. Again, it was so tight between these three guys, in my opinion, uh, because Lucas Van Ness, I could see him developing and molding into like a TJ Watt type of guy. I think he has that type of potential. He just got to put some pass rush plan together, some tools other than just a bull rush, you know, like which is amazing when in his own right. Maybe you just play him at five tech all year in his rookie season. But I do think Lucas Van Ness is going to be an absolute monster. The Loch Ness Monsters, I like to call him. I can't wait to see his development. I'm lower on Tyree Wilson, mainly because I just think, like, I don't know, some of the twitchiness, athleticism, uh, you know, while he's got some explosiveness off the line, he does kind of remind me a little bit of Marcus Davenport. Davenport, I was a little lower on coming out of the draft. Like sometimes these guys, like Keon White, I'm a little lower on those guys. I don't know what it is. It's just a scheme preference, personal thing, whatever. Who knows? I still think he's going to be a productive pass rusher in the NFL. I still think he's going to be a good player. I just don't know if he's going to be this high end edge rusher. So we'll see if he can develop into a Rashawn Gary. Who knows? And then after this top five range, like six through eight are all guys that I see having a big impact on a defense. I Honestly, Foskey's underrated. I almost feel like he's being underrated. He, he was talked about a lot. I think he was being a little overrated at the beginning of the season, but maybe not even. I think Foskey's a really good player, and going back on his film, like, yeah, he needs to work on some counters to be more consistent in getting after the passer, but this guy's a sack artist, man, and he, he just, I watched plays on this guy, some reps, and, like, this guy's going to be really, really good in the NFL. I'm just really big fan of Isaiah Foskey. I think he's going to be a very good player. Uh, B.J. Ojolari, Will McDonald, both going to have situ- you know, speed rush guys. I think B.J. Ojolari is one of the more refined pass rushers already at his young age of not even 21, I believe, yet. He's a really good rusher. I just don't know if he's going to be a high-end number one. I see him in similar vein to Aziz Ojolari and, and his brother, but he's going to be a very good player, someone I want on my team sort of thing. Late first round, early second, heck yeah, I'm taking B.J. Ojolari, Will McDonald, do have a McDonald farm, but of course, but I do have some reservations on Will McDonald, but at the same time, this guy's going to be an excellent speed rusher for any team that gets him. If you need some speed off the edge, 
Well, look no further. This Ben, too. I mean, he's got insane Ben. Problem with him, he just doesn't have a power profile, and that is something that NFL tackles will be able to throw in the dirt. You know what I mean? Uh, Yaya Diaby. Uh, wait till I get to Yazir Abdullah. This Louisville uh, defensive line is so insane, man. I went back and watching Louisville tape. I'm like, oh, this is crazy, man. But yeah, Yaya Diaby is a guy that if you don't, you know, if you haven't keep an eye on some of these Louisville guys, uh, like myself, I went back just recently watched the tape. I'm like. Holy mackerel, why have I not watched the tape sooner? These guys are fun, man. They are really a fun combination of speed out on the outside. But the problem is they don't really have any um, pass rush to them, pass rush can tools, and what should I say? Yaya Diaby's got more power profile. Like He can be a good power rusher at the next level as long as with his speed. He's got like, what is he, run 4 five, one, or 5-1 four, or 4-4? Four. I mean, he's, he's a great, he's got great athletic tools, solid length, like all the tools to develop. He just doesn't have a pass rush plan to his game pass rush tools so if he can get with a coach he could develop into a a superstar at some point in his career so I do like him a lot in that mid-second round as a developmental guy for the future and then you got this range from like 10 to 13 who are guys that I feel really solid they're gonna have a nice role in the NFL uh and Tui Tupelo could be a starter probably right away I just don't know we'll see about the high-end tools but he's still a young player if he can develop some power to his game he could be really freaking good. Now, he's got some arm limitations that are going to, I think, hinder him with his missed tackles and things like that, you know, finishing. Ultimately, Tui Tupelo, too, is a disruptor, and he's going to be great in an, a defense that prioritizes guys that can stunt and loop. I think Tui is going to be really, really good at that. Great at utilizing his hands to disengage as well. Uh, Felix and Yudike Uzama, solid edge rusher. Again, does he have that crazy power profile and length that you're looking for at the next level? Like, he's got decent. But, you know, the thing about him is he's kind of like, um, um, what's his name from last year from Penn State? Um, Ed Bikati. He's kind of in a similar vein to that in my eyes. Good pass rush plan. Just doesn't have, like, any crazy tools to his game. But going to be a good player. Uh, Derek Hall, he's got that one-arm crazy bull rush move that he goes to time and time again. I love Derek Hall's energy, too. I just feel like he's going to be... A great third edge rusher in the NFL. Maybe can be a starter, but for I conservatively would say a great number two backup rotational player that's going to play 400 snaps a season, maybe more. And then we got Keon White. Again, I'm a little lower on Keon White. I think he could be a base end. Could also play an edge certain teams and certain roles depending on how you view him. I just want to see a lot from him. I saw him on the ground way too much. He's got a lot to do with his pass rush tools to still get to a point where I feel confident is him as a starter. So I have him more in this developed tier backup for a season or two mold with tools, of course, and upside. I don't see the crazy juice athleticism that our people were talking about, but I do think he can develop. Andre Carter, I still believe in Andre Carter. He's played for Army. Hey, he, 90% of the time he was dealing with duty stuff that he had to deal with for the Army. I mean, that takes a lot of your time. Just imagine when he gets in the NFL and that's his full-time gig. This guy could develop, man. So I really believe in Andre Carter still. Not like high-end athlete tools or anything, but the guy is going to be a really good player at some point in the NFL, in my opinion. Could be uh, a starter and maybe a plus starter. Who knows? Isaiah McGuire, great power, number two edge. Going to be an idea. This is where if you're a good NFL team, you need depth behind your edge rusher. Teams like the Pittsburgh Steelers could really use a guy behind TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith. I think Isaiah McGuire would be a great addition. You know what I mean? That's the type of dude he is just really going to be a solid edge rusher. He's very low bust potential in my opinion. Uh, Byron Young, a guy I'm rooting for as a former bagger myself. I love bagging groceries. there for like nine years. I'm rooting for Byron Young. He's an older prospect. I don't care. Started football late. But this guy has got extreme juice. He's your situational pass rusher. Maybe not a full-time starter. But you talk about a guy that's going to be able to provide some some electricity to your defense. That's Byron Young. Zach Harrison. Eh, we'll see about Zach Harrison. Of course, he's got that power profile. If he can really hone his bull rush. I want to see more of your bull rush, man. But definitely a guy I still like. Uh, Mike Morris, edge rusher from Michigan, the Wolverine. Another guy that I think is going to be a really solid player. Good number three guy. Edge setter, whether it's a 4-3. I think you can play 3-4, though. Either which way. Thomas Incombe. They're kind of like a um, rotational player. I see having a nice impact in the NFL. 
and I think he can be someone that works into maybe a, a Dominique Robinson type of you know range, something like that. But overall, there's my edge ranking. But going on to the defensive tackle position, and Jalen Carter, my number one guy, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Brian Brzee, I think Brian Brzee is just going to be a really good player. I think he's being underrated. If I were an NFL team, as long as the medical stuff checks out, I think he's a top 15 player. I think he's a borderline top 10 player in this draft class. Really, really good, talented dude. You can play this guy off the edge. He's got that level of athletic ability and profile where I could put him on the edge and put him on stunts and gains and just get creative with Brian Brzee. He is such a dynamic player. If, again, he's got some bad luck. It's not necessarily just injuries, man. It's just, I feel like, bad luck. I mean, he's had a ton of crazy stuff happen in his life. I just feel like he's going to be a superstar at some point. Kalijah Kansi, dude that isn't a bit of a boomer bust here, I would say. Ultimately, this guy, I just I go back and you watch the film, and I'm like, I don't care about his size constraints. He's going to be a superstar. I mean, he's going to be a really, really good player. If nothing else, he is going to be a great pass rusher on third downs to have that you can utilize off the edge, can put inside, whatever. But I do think he's a three-tech at the next level. Atomi Wadabare. You know, those are, he's another one, he's boom or bust. If he can put together, like, he, his tape at Northwestern is Western? I don't know, Northwestern, that sounds like a, <laughs> and it just so happens to be an Ivy League school, too, in Northwestern. That's the funny thing about it. I can't pronounce it. But anyway, uh, hey, I probably wouldn't score very well on that S4 score either. But, hey, CJ, I'm right there with you. Maybe I like you more. But on to the rest of this group. Oh, I told me why to borrow real quick. I was getting distracted. I think he's in that boom or bust here. The tape at Northwestern wasn't great, but those tools, I'm going to bet on those tools. Like, that's insanity, man. That's Aaron Donald in more like than Aaron Donald the test out. So, yeah, I mean, it told me why to borrow. I still take him late first round. Why not? Like, this guy could be a superstar at the next level. Benton, I love Keanu Benton. His tape was so good at Wisconsin, underutilized, too, as a, a nose tackle there. He's going to be a really, really good player as a rotational one, three tech. Let him get after the passer more. Really good player. Uh, Nazi Smith, another one of these guys where, I mean, I've got six guys that I believe could go in the first round of this defensive tackle class. I really like these guys. Uh, Mozzie Smith, another one that it's like he's going to be a really good player. I, I just don't see a whole ton of bust potential. Maybe the high end won't be there with Mozzie, but I think he's going to be a really, really good football player for someone who needs someone that can stop the run, give you some pass rush tools as well, but he's going to help free up your edge rushers to get more pressure or other guys to help out your defense as a whole. And then Moro Ojimo. I, I just love his film, man. From Texas, this guy is just so good off the line. Like, he is always the first guy off the line. I don't care who it was. Like they don't have scrubs there at Texas. He was the first guy off the line consistently, and he wins man he's got good pass rush tools to his game and another guy I believe he's um he's from out of country like is it Nigeria Nigeria I forget where he's from but he's still a young player and he's been in college for five years but fun backstory with Moro Ojimo and I think he's a guy that is going to be a really really good player in the NFL someone that I'm keeping a close eye out on Moro Ojimo from Texas as a three tech ha- slash hybrid five tech three, four base end, whatever you want to put him as, but really, really crafty guy. And I don't think he's a liability in the run game either. I wouldn't say he's the strongest guy. If you're going to double team him, offensive linemen, yeah, he's going to, you know, they're going to be able to push him back. He, he's not Aaron Donald's strength, but I think he could be a really, really solid base end that could work into a Draymond Jones type of role. And then we go on to Gervin Dexter. I want to like Gervin Dexter, but his film, it's atrocious, man. It, it's not good. But the tools are there. Like he ha- he looks like Chris Jones. He's just not Chris Jones. You know what I mean? So I'm still gonna bank on that upside with Gervin Dexter. That's why I have him as like a second, third round grade. He's a late second rounder, early third rounder, ideally in the third round. But we'll see if he can develop his tools. Zach Pickens, nice rotational three tech early on and could develop into a nice starter down the road. Seek Iga, your road grader, your nose tackle. If you're looking for one, go get Sika. If you're Green Bay and you need a nose tackle, Sika. Go get Sika Ika. Uh, Carl Brooks, I love. I mean, Carl Brooks, Bowling Green. Hey, I, I think he's going to be a nice rotational player early on that could develop into a starter. Or maybe uh, in a similar vein to Alex Highsmith, give him a year or two in different positions, of course. But I think he could be a nice three tech down the line. Uh, other guys to talk about here, I mean, Colby Wooden's a good player. I uh, just don't know, you know, how he's going to 
transition to the NFL at that size will be a bit of a, a challenge, but the tape is really good with Colby Wood and Kendrick Corbin. Extreme flashes, like, you know, one game, he's unbelievable. Next game, it's like, who is, where is this guy? I don't even know if he's on the field. But, yeah, interesting player. Jaquel and Roy, if he can, you know, maybe not crazy athlete, but he's got a nice power profile to him. He's got a decent amount of quicks, too. So I think he can be a nice rotational piece. Byron Young, I know he's going to be a, a decent player, good rotational player. Colby Turner, maybe in the mold of, like, a Matthew Butler type, who, you know, somewhere in there, that range, kind of what I see him. Cameron Young, good, solid, uh, 300 snap guy. That's what I see him as a rotational nose tackle in that Corey Peters side of type of mold, something like that. Uh, you know, Nesta J. Silvera, the dude that maybe give you like a Roy Lopez type of vibes. Who knows? Something like that, right? Arizona State. And then we go on to Broderick Martin, another nose tackle, rotational player. This is where it's like if you don't draft nose tackles early and you want someone later, go after a Jared Clark or a Broderick Martin, you know, Nesta J. Silvera, someone like that. Uh, linebacker wise, this is where things get a little crazy. Linebacker to me, it, this class, it, it really is going to be. You're going to find some guys. I really believe this class is not like terrible. There's some question marks with a lot of these guys, other than Jack Campbell, in my opinion. Jack Campbell, number one linebacker. You plug him in, and he's going to be a good player. CJ Mosley type of guy, leader on off the field. No issues really with Jack Campbell. Good athletic numbers too. So backed the tape up with the athletic ability like Jack Campbell, Captain Jack. Then we go on to Drew Sanders and Nick Herbig, Dan Henley. This is my next tier, I would say. Uh, Drew Sanders has the tools. Like I see him developing down the line like Tremaine Edmonds does, but I do think there might be a rocky season or two before he gets there. Okay, So that's kind of my view on Drew Sanders. Nick Herbig, oh man, Nick Herbig, so good. I want him as an outside, like 3-4 uh, outside linebacker that can drop into coverage, but also play like a... A Caden Ellis role. That's kind of what I see out of Nick Herbig. Playing something like that. So, yeah, Nick Nick Herbig, I want him still rushing after getting after the quarterback. But he's not going to be your every down edge rusher just with his size. But he's crafty and he wins, man. He's got more power than you think. He's good at his leverage. He knows how to get into offensive linemen or offensive tackles pads really, really well. Then Deion Henley, another one of those guys I'm rooting for. He just, he's the epitome of a football player. Like, he will do anything to play football. He was like a receiver. He was like a tight end. He was a safety. And he's like, oh, I'm going to play linebacker now. Washington State gets the starting job, and he never looks back. Unbelievable player, tenacity. He's going to be a good football player. I, I'd be shocked if he doesn't turn out to be uh, you know, like a Shaq Thompson type of player, like just a good football player. He's going to work out. So if you need a good linebacker, go take Deion Henley. He's going to be your guy. He, he has a higher floor than uh, Drew Sanders. Maybe even Nick Herbig. Nick Herbig is just a guy I kind of love, and depending on your role and scheme. But if you're talking about pure inside linebacker, Dan Henley is probably my number two guy in terms of just pure plug him in. He's going to be a good football player. Uh, then we got Noah Sewell. I still believe in Noah Sewell, man. Noah Sewell, I, he gets a lot of hate, but it's like I go back and for certain schemes, I think he's going to be a really good thumping linebacker. So it just depends on what your scheme is, how you utilize your linebackers. But for teams that are kind of more old school, New England, you know, all those teams. Go get yourself Noah Sewell, and I think you'll be very, very happy with yourself. And then uh, Trenton Simpson, he's not very good. The tape's not very good. Put him at edge. I'm serious. This guy needs to play Billy off the edge. That's why I clump him and Yazir Abdullah together. Like, these guys need to play playing 3-4 outside linebacker who drop back into hook and uh, flat curl zone, or flat zones and hook curls. Stuff like that, very simple stuff, concepts, but mainly they're rushing the passer depending on who's blocking, who's going out. Trenton Simpson should be covering guys out of the backfield, man-to-man. That's really all he should be covering. Okay, let him stick. Let him just utilize his athletic ability, his explosiveness. That's really what you should do with a guy like Trenton Simpson, Yazir Abdullah, same thing. Like I, I like Abdullah a lot, too. He's a guy that just doesn't have a power profile, and that's why I don't think he sticks off the edge. He's smaller, too. But he's a guy that, man, went back and watched Louisville. Crafty guy. Another one of these Josh Uchi types, or if you want to get him on stunts and loops, he's going to be so dangerous with his athletic ability. Trenton Simpson, they're in that mold. And then this tier from 8 to 10, this is another one of those tiers, kind of like I just like a lot of these guys. They're fun. I think they're going to have an interesting skill set at the NFL level. Dorian Williams, your coverage guy, right? Maybe a 
David Long or, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of some other guys, but something in that mold. You got Cam Jones. Cam Jones. I don't know what this guy, I am telling you. He is going to be a good football player from IU. Yes, I'm a little biased. I graduated with an IU degree. Uh, I, I went to IUPY, ooey pooey, but man, Cam Jones, he's another one of those guys like Deion Henley. He's just a football player, man. He'll 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 be Rodney Lott out there. I don't care if he doesn't have an arm to play with. He is still going to play with every single ounce of energy. He just doesn't quit. And, oh my gosh, man. Cam Jones is if you haven't watched Cam Jones, go watch freaking Cam Jones. He's unbelievable, man. Had an injury this past season. I think he missed three years for IU, but he's such a good player. You know, sometimes IU, it's hard to watch IU football at times, I'm not gonna lie, but Hey, when you notice a good football player, you notice a good football player. Cam Jones is one of those guys. Ivan Pace, if you're a blitz-heavy linebacking system, he's going to be your guy. Really, really good blitzer. You want to utilize him as a blitzer, I'll tell you that right now. Henry Totova, going to be a good player. You know, I don't think he's going to be a high-end linebacker, but I think he'll be a good one. Very instinctual guy. Not the greatest coverage dude, but good, solid tackler. And he's going to be a fine linebacker in the NFL. So if you need a plug-and-play guy, if you're a team that just says, hey, just put in a decent player. Henry Toto is your guy. He'll probably go earlier than the fourth round. He'll probably go third, maybe, but third, fourth round, I'm okay with it. Isaiah Moore, if he can stay healthy, he's going to be a nice little Mike linebacker, developmental guy. He's a good tackler, not like your sideline to sideline speed guy. Doesn't have those high end tools, but he's a good instinctual linebacker. Uh, yeah, so I, yeah, he's a solid player. Uh, Severica Dennis. So yeah, he's a good player, too, that could develop into a nice will linebacker for a team. I think he's got crazy explosiveness where it's like if he sees it, it's there. Like, he's going, man. And his instincts are good, too. Like, he's got good instincts. And he could develop into a nice coverage linebacker. So keep a, keep an eye on, on Cervecchia Dennis out of Pittsburgh. Really good player. Interesting player. I'll say that. And it's like another tier with athleticism. But I'd put, you know... Cervenica Dennis at the top of the list between him, D. Winters, Owen Popo, Demarion Overshone, and Aubrey Miller. Like that's kind of a tier for me. That these guys could all develop into a really, really nice, athletic, profiled linebacker. Now different roles. Like Demarion Overshone, I see him down at the line of scrimmage. Like they played him this past season at Texas, and he was his best there for Texas in that role in the Sam linebacker role. And I think he can cover tight ends with his size and speed profile. Uh, Owen Popo. He's, you know, the tank, you know, he's the freak, pardon me, that I'm thinking of Tank Bigsby, but he's the he's the freak, and he's someone that has a ton of athletic profile, just a long way to go still with his developing and his IQ, understanding football. And then we got Ventrell Miller, Shaka Hayward, both guys that I think can play football. And, and if you're talking about replacement linebackers in the NFL, these guys are kind of in that tier, very instinctual guys, solid, linear athletes, not super explosive guys but they're good players, you know what I mean? And and I think they can make an NFL roster and have a contributing sort of impact for whatever team, respectively, they get drafted on. So here's my linebacker rankings. Corner-wise now, okay, let's go, corners. It gets more interesting here. Pretty self-explanatory top three. I have Gonzalez number one. A lot of people have Devin Witherspoon. It's kind of what is your tea preference or coffee preference or whatever. I don't know, man. Bagels, we got the everythings going out here. But this is where it gets more interesting. Darius Rush, Clark Phillips, Tyreek Stevenson. You don't normally see these guys here. I just I love these guys, man. I think they're really good football players. Darius Rush is so good. I go back and I'm like, this guy, man, he's man-to-man, dude. He's so fluid with his hips and his size. If he can work on his, you know, maybe his ball skills a little bit more. Oh, he's going to be a really good player, man. I'm telling you, watch out for Darius Rush. Clark Phillips, he's a really good player. If he was six foot, he'd be one of the top corners in this draft. Easily, easily, especially if you had better speed too. He's what was he four five one, not the greatest explosive numbers, but off man zone coverage, he's going to be an absolute nightmare. Covered the best players in college football at the highest level. I mean, I get it. They were none of like these big, speedy guys. You know, Jackson Smith and Jig, but Jordan Addison. But he played really, really well, and that's the type of mold you are putting him up against at the NFL. And he's going to cover those guys really admirably. Uh, Tyreek Stevenson. He's got everything like to be in a solid corner, like in that mold of a Carlton Davis. He's just gonna be a decent football player. You know what I mean? Like I, I feel really good. You get Tyreek Stevenson on your team, very solid player. He's another one of those guys maybe can work on his turning his head a little bit more consistently at the ball, but ultimately gonna be a good football player. Uh, Deontay Banks. I'm a little lower on Banks, 
mainly because like his ball skills, I didn't see it enough. Whereas some of these other guys, I'm like, they've got ball skills, at least more I feel confident in. Banks, I, I do worry about that with him. There is a little bit of, you know, Eli Apple to his game. And I think that uh, with time, he can definitely get there. But he's got all the tools, athletic profile, could be an absolute stud. But for right now, I do worry about those ball skills, turning your head more consistently, locating the football. He's a great tackler, though, and he's got great athleticism. So those things are going for him. If you maybe put him, start him out in a cover two system where he can focus on making plays more or less, keeping things in front of him, he might be best in that role. That might be the best spot for him, actually, especially with his tackling capability. Kelly Ringo, Keely Ringo, should I say. I still believe in Killy Ringo. I think he's being a little underrated at this point. I get it. The tape wasn't great. Got to do a better job staying in phase. You know, not if he misses in his punch, he can get redirected quickly and lose off the line of scrimmage pretty bad on quick slants. But at the same time, I think that those some of those things are fixable with Ringo's tape, and I think he can still be a really good football player down the line and be a nice physical corner for certain matchups. I think he can be dominant. Other guys down the tier list here that I want to talk about. Eli Ricks, maybe not being talked about a whole ton, but I think Ricks is still a good football player. You know, like you have to understand your limitations. I think he's in that mold of like a Levi Wallace. That's kind of what I see with Eli Ricks. Just a solid corner, not an elite corner, but a solid player that plays in the league for eight years, gets a nice second contract. Maybe the team you draft or that drafts him not going to pay him, but I think he'll be, you know, he'll get a nice solid contract down the line and be a decent starter, at least a replacement level starter. He's a good player, man. Good ball skills. Again, just not crazy speed. You want to keep him kind of more on one side of the field. But I like Eli Rex, man. Uh, Cam Smith, solid. You know, gives you inside out versus till It wasn't like super high Cam Smith in his tape. But at the same time, I think he's okay. You know, I think he's a decent corner there. Uh, Travis Hodges Thomas, and if he was bigger, he'd be way up on this list. He's so instinctual. His explosiveness is up the wazoo. But man, he's a fun player to watch. Holy mackerel. Julius Brent's another fun player to watch. But problem is, when he gets beat, he gets beat. It is bad. But <laughs> certain schemes, he's very scheme specific. I'll say that. Garrett Williams, a lot of question marks coming out from the ACL. So we'll see how that goes. But still has really, really good off man coverage ability with his feet. Movement skills are really good. Uh, then we got Riley Moss, great zone corner, in my opinion. Kyrie Brew Kelly's going to be a nice backup corner. Can play press man, can play press zone. I think that'll be his best role at the next level. Corey Trice, press man, cover three type of type of dude. Uh, yeah, good movement skills for his size as well. Uh, Control Clark, he's going to be a good slot player. I think he's going to be a very nice slot corner for someone. At least, if nothing else, a good backup to have on your roster. So there, hey, shows uh, show you how deep this quarterback class. I could just go into the fourth, fifth round. And then going on to the safeties, man, Brian Branch, self-explanatory, Brian Branch the beast, Quan Martin, Jair Brown, really close for me. Like, upside-wise, Jartavius Martin has it, and that's why I kind of gave him the nod. But I will say, Martin's got to get a little bit better at the catch point, finishing plays, but the athletic ability, put him in the slot, if nothing else, free safety gives you that uh, capability where you can play him really anywhere on your defensive backfield. I really like Quan Martin a lot. And then Jair Brown, someone that it's like, he's another one of these guys where it's like, I understand the athletic testing wasn't great, but he's a really instinctual safety. Now, sometimes he'll be maybe too instinctual in a sense where he'll just take himself out of a play. But at the same time, I think he's going to be a ball hawk and a playmaker for a team. And you're going to have to live with some of those early mistakes as he develops. But I really, really like what Jair Brown can do as an overall safety that can play free safety, can play box safety, can play at the line of scrimmage. He's a punisher as well with his hits. So, yeah, all around, Jair Brown, I fell in love with his tape. Uh, Christopher Smith, you know, I love Chris Smith. He, he, despite his size, he's going to have some issues, of course, tackling some of these bigger running backs, but he, keep him as a deep safety slash hybrid. He might even be best in the slot at the next level. Who knows? He was a former corner, but definitely a guy that I think is going to play in the NFL Really, really like his tape. So instinctual. Really, really good safety. Uh, Marte Marpu. Man, Sacramento State. Where did this one come from? Okay, now, I may have, I probably should have put him in the linebacker position, but I kept him as a safety in this. I'm really, after watching him at the senior bowl, I'm like, holy cow, who is this guy? And just doing, you know, more work on this dude, seeing his numbers and everything like that. He's going to be a good Sam linebacker at the next level. Someone that, he, you know, especially in modern day NFL where you need to be able to cover 
running backs. You need to be able to cover tight ends. Here's your guy, right? Here is your guy. This is that tight end eraser, that running back eraser that takes those guys with his explosiveness that he has and his instincts, especially in the run fits. Oh, man, it's going to be a beautiful thing for Marte Marpu. Watch out for this guy. Great name. Dude, that's an NFL name if I've ever heard it. Marte Marpu. Woo! But uh, I don't know what's going on now. It's still early in the morning. You know what I'm saying? But Anthony Antonio Johnson going to be a good box safety. I don't see him as this, like, you know, crazy rangy guy. But he's got some explosiveness despite his test numbers as a good blitzer. Can keep him as a big slot. Kind of in that role, strong safety, box safety, in your forcer, Jamal Adams type of role. And, you know, how highly do you draft that? Those are all question marks. JL Skinner in that sort of mold to uh, tier. But, you know, with that, he had that pack, I believe, which uh, unfortunately wasn't able to test. He's still a good football player. He's going to be another tight end eraser type of matchup guy. And then from 8 through 13, like, honestly, I feel good about all these guys that can have an NFL role at some state, some point, right? And Jason Taylor, someone I'm really high on. I really like him as that deep safety back-end guy with his instincts. Jamie Robinson, kind of like a Jalen Pitry light sort of prospect. Doesn't have, like, the, I think, uh, the athletic tools that Pitry has or the length and stuff like that. But he's a good player. I think he'll be a nice rotational early on guy that develops into an, a solid starter. Anthony Johnson, another one of those guys that's like, he, he played, like, so many games consistently. He was very durable, very reliable, and gives you this jack-of-all-trades guy. Can play deep safe. He can play strong. Can play slot. Former corner. Really can play anywhere. Tried, tested, safety, corner. Well, corner, safety, develop, or, uh, project, whatever you want to put him as. You know, convert. And then we go on to Jordan Battle. Box safety, right? If you need a box safety, Jordan Battle, plug him in. There you go. You know, he's a great instinctual guy he's always around the football making tackles that's your player right there i think he's a better version of jonathan abram and then trey dean here's someone that you put on tight ends you put on running backs with his uh, agility and uh, size to be able to cover those tight ends i think he's a perfect that's his role which is huge in the nfl you got to be able to cover some especially if your team that is in a tough division with good tight ends you want to go ahead and get yourself a trey dean at the end of the draft later in the draft sydney brown He's in that mold of maybe Talifunga, uh, Talifunga, Talanoa Hufunga, if I can think. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a great name, too, Talanoa Hufunga. Sidney Brown, he's got those rocked. He's rocked up. He uh, looks like Bob Sanders in a way. And if he can stay healthy, hey, I'll play Bob Sanders. Bob Sanders is a fun player to watch. But Sidney Brown in that sort of mold can be a nice hook curl defender. That's kind of what I see, though. I, you know, and also can... Put him up on tight ends. Don't know about running backs. He's not the most twitchy guy, though. He's got some stiffness, and that's why I kind of rank some of these other guys a little bit higher, but ultimately going to be a fun player. And in the right scheme, he's very scheme-dependent in my view, but can be a really dynamic player in the right scheme. And we go on to Daniel Scott. Good rotational third safety to have. You got Kamari in corner. Here's someone who's going to be a nice slot corner. That's really, I think, what he's going to be. Great size for a slot corner, kind of more of a bigger slot corner, but he's very, very fluid and someone that's solid in run defense too jordan howden nice rotational piece uh versatile safety can play i think he's more of a split safety i don't think he's got crazy athletic ability even though his numbers were really good I see him more as a split guy uh christian isian okay this guy was interesting to me watching him at rutgers really interesting yeah good player man i think he's being a little underrated actually kind of a sleeper guy someone that you know i wouldn't be shocked about in a couple years if he develops into a nice slot corner or somewhat of that mold maybe he could play you know deep safety too he's gonna have some size issues right he's like five foot eight so those so some of those things could be a liability at the next level but definitely a guy to keep an eye out on if your team gets him on your roster, might start end as a back end, even practice squad guy, but ultimately could elevate himself into a guy that makes not just a roster, but ends up being a contributor for your team. And then finishing up here with Brandon Joseph, Ronnie Hickman, some guys that, you know, you get on the roster and we'll see how it works out. Hickman a little lower on, but I do think Brandon Joseph can still play. Doesn't have the crazy athletic up testing, but at the same time, still feel like Brandon Joseph, I want to take a chance on him at the end of the draft. At least as a split safety, maybe a quarters guy, someone that might be able to develop and be a starter down the line. And finally, we're on to the special teams, kickers and punters. And it all starts with Jake Money Mooney. If you need a kicker, if you're Green Bay looking to fill that Mason Crosby decade-long decade run, 
or I think the 49ers need a kicker. Plenty of teams, I feel like, could use a kicker of Jake Money Mooney's status. Hey, it's so important to have a good kicker and a clutch kicker at that. Jake Money Mooney could be one of the best in the NFL. Go ahead and snag yourself a kicker. Fourth, fifth round. I don't think it's too big of a premium. Then we got Chad Ryland. Good kicker in his own right. Nice big leg from Maryland. Could develop into a really, really good kicker as well. Christopher Dunn. Lou Graza award winner. Someone that... Very accurate, doesn't have that big leg, but an accurate kicker. And I think he could be a nice nice spot there in the 6th, 7th round to take and develop into a nice long-term kicker for you. Then we got Jonathan Cruz, got a big leg, definitely for sure. He needs to work on his accuracy a little bit. But 7th round UDFA pickup, Jonathan Cruz. And then finally Jake Palesny out of Georgia, who famously had that Cincinnati game winner, which was kind of put him on the map. And he's a good kicker in his own right, so maybe he can be a nice one there at the end of the draft. Punters-wise, Michael Turk, he has a leg that can kick a ball into the atmosphere. I mean, he's got probably the biggest leg I've ever seen on a punter. Huge, huge leg. Oh, my gosh. It's insanity, man. I don't know. This guy, does. he's got a robot leg or something. I don't know. But Michael Turk, he's got an unbelievable leg. Brad Robbins got a good leg, too. But a lot of upside with these guys. Uh, Bryce Barringer, Michigan State, let's go. Hey, he's a good kicker. He went in his own right. Didn't quite win the Ray Guide Award. The next guy, well, and not the next guy, Ethan Evans from Wingate's a good player. But Adam Korsak, he was the Ray Guide Award winner this past season. He's a good kicker in his own right from Rutgers. All these guys, I think, can make a nice NFL roster and be good kickers. But I do think Michael Turk, Brad Robbins, the upside of these two guys is, is crazy, man. Turk especially could be one of the best punters in the NFL. Definitely some boomer bust, though. Uh, and then long snappers. Hey, Alex Ward, if you need a long snapper, I think he's the most draftable of the bunch. Uh, but you do have Chris Stroll, you have Matt Hemmenberg, and then also Robert Soldrum from, hey, Virginia Military Academy. Don't forget about the military academies. This guy, unbelievable. Hey, he's got a good story too. But, hey, there's your long snappers. There's your kickers, punters, all of that. My defensive rankings. Let me know where I'm wrong, which I'm probably wrong on plenty of these. But I was just, like I said, take my shot on things and try to have some fun with it. And I always go with some of my guys mixed in here. So I hope everyone has a good day. My name's Gisling. I'm doing my thing. I'll talk to you later.